What's growing on everyone? It's Thursday, January 9th, and today's video is going to be all about when, why, and how to fertilize fig cuttings after they've rooted. The four fig cuttings that you see right in front of you, I started them in my in-depth tutorial back in November on how to root fig cuttings, and I'll make sure that I link to that video above so you can reference that along the way. These two right here are Negre de Agde, this one right here is a Maltese Beauty, and this one right here is a Pastelier. And they're all fairly advanced, and they're at a point where they need to start being fertilized externally. So before I get too far into the discussion, I want to start out with the why. Why should you fertilize your fig cuttings? And that is quite simple. These fig cuttings all in front of you are self-sustainable to a point. Inside these fig cuttings, the tree naturally stores carbohydrates and nutrients. So when you go to root your fig cuttings, the initial energy that causes roots to come out of the bottom of the nodes and the first buds to form, they all come from stored energy and nutrition inside of the fig cuttings themselves. But those nutrient stores are quickly exhausted because it takes quite a bit of energy for these cuttings to sustain and root themselves and start to branch out. Now, under normal circumstances, if these cuttings were to root themselves in the ground of the earth in a rich, fertile forest, the roots would dig down and find a limitless supply of nutrients because the earth is basically an unlimited, sustainable source of nutrition. That is not what we're doing here. We are rooting in cups, and inside these cups, there's only a little bit of soil. So that only gives us a small opportunity for nutrients to be stored in that very, very restrictive medium. And what makes things worse is the medium that most people tend to use when they root fig cuttings. The most popular things that people use to root fig cuttings in are peat moss, cocoa core, and perlite. And all of those things are biologically inert. They're considered inorganic. There's no nutrition inside of them. So even if the fig cuttings sprout roots and they start digging down into the soil, like you can clearly see here, if you're using a mix that's 100% core or peat moss, there's not going to be any nutrition for the roots to actually suck up. So those cuttings are going to wither away and die very quickly if you don't give them supplemental nutrients. Even if you were to use a very high quality potting mix that come pre-fertilized with a good amount of nutrition and organic matter in them, because figs grow so vigorously, you can just see how extensive the root system is in here already, they are going to quickly exhaust any amount of nutrition in even the highest quality potting mixes in fairly short order. These are vigorous growers, so it's best that we start fertilizing externally with added nutrients as quickly as possible and as soon as possible. So now that we've established why we need to fertilize our fig cuttings, let's talk about when we should start fertilizing our fig cuttings. When figs start to root, you are going to notice a few very, very small fingernail shaped white roots, almost pure white roots that are going to start breaking through the uh, breaking through the soil medium. They're almost going to look like hairs. They're going to be like the size of hangnails off your uh, off your thumb. And those roots at that point are too fragile to be fertilized. You want to apply fertilizer once the roots have matured and toughened up a little bit so you don't burn them. And when you start seeing roots like this, where they're starting to take on a bit of an orange tinge, or they start to spiral around the container, kind of like this, that is generally when you want to start beginning to fertilize your fig cuttings. Those roots are fairly mature and they can take a limited amount of fertilizer without getting burned. And it's really that simple. As soon as the roots are mature and able to handle fertilizer, we want to begin the fertilizing process. So now that we've discussed the when, let's discuss the how. And this is the most important and detailed part. When it comes to fertilizing fig cuttings, throw everything you know out the window when it comes to organic gardening because of the situation that we're in. Granulated organic fertilizers, when it comes to fertilizing the cuttings, as you can see right here, are practically useless. And the reason why is because organic fertilizers, specifically the granulated type, have to be broken down by the soil bacteria 
and fungi in order for them to become bioavailable to the plants. In their granulated form, the plants cannot use them. And because we've started all of our cuttings in cups or little pots, the soil biology just isn't there. There isn't a dense, diverse microbiome that is able to break down organic granules. You have to use a soluble fertilizer that is immediately bioavailable to the plant. And when it comes to soluble fertilizers, you have two options. You have either chemical or you have organic. An example of an organic soluble fertilizer would be fish emulsion. Well, considering you're probably rooting these cuttings indoors, I would recommend against bringing fish emulsion into your home because it absolutely reeks and it will attract bugs and other pests like fungus gnats. It's just, it's not worth it in my opinion. For this case, when it comes to these little tiny isolated pots, I strongly suggest you use a chemical soluble fertilizer because a chemical soluble fertilizer does not need to be broken down by a microbiome. The nutrition is immediately available to your plants. You're not going to bring any kind of pests or encourage the growth of any pests inside your home. And they're going to do a great job at giving your cuttings everything that they need to grow quickly and efficiently at a very, very affordable price. Right here in front of me, I have two very popular conventional soluble chemical fertilizers. On the left, I have the Walmart brand Expert Gardener Plant Food. It is 24% nitrogen, 8% phosphorus, 16% potassium. This is an exact copy of miracle Grow All-Purpose. It is very high in nitrogen. The one next to it, of course, is miracle Grow Tomato Plant Food. miracle Grow Tomato Plant Food is much more balanced than the All-Purpose variety. It is 18% nitrogen, 18% phosphorus, and 21% potassium. Whichever one you choose to use is up to you. This is one of those cases where you could either go high nitrogen or balanced, and I'll explain why. When you are growing your fig cuttings, at the very beginning, you are trying to encourage leafy green growth. The green leaves are the solar panels of the plant, so it's in our best interest to get as many leaves as possible because they will be able to absorb more sunlight and get more energy via photosynthesis and grow as quickly as possible. So when you're trying to start these cuttings, a high nitrogen fertilizer is not a bad option. So I like the miracle Grow All-Purpose 24816 for this. However, I want to caution you, once the middle of spring rolls around and we want to get our figs out of growth mode and into fruiting mode, miracle Grow All-Purpose and any other high nitrogen fertilizers will work against you. It actually takes phosphorus, the middle number, when you're dealing with the NPK of fertilizer to develop the fruits. And when we want to encourage fruiting, we want to switch to a high phosphorus fertilizer, similar to miracle Grow Bloom Booster Flower Food. That fertilizer is 30% phosphorus, so it has twice as much phosphorus as it has nitrogen, which is only 15%. This is very critical and I will make sure to link to my fertilizer video above so you get all of the information. If you're not familiar with the fertilizing process, I strongly recommend you follow that link above and get familiar with it because you'll have much better success. But for the purposes of this video, the higher nitrogen all-purpose stuff is great and I like to use that whenever I can because the knockoff Walmart brand is outrageously cheap and it does a good job for what we want to do here. Many of you know that when it comes to rooting fig cuttings, the number one enemy is rot. Having soil that is too damp is the harbinger of death when it comes to success for propagating hardwood cuttings. So you definitely do not want to overwater your fig cuttings. The good news is, because our roots are so advanced, they're at a point now where they can uptake quite a bit of water. So unless you're absolutely drenching your fig cuttings and then bringing them indoors in a dark, shady area that doesn't get a lot of direct light, you're probably not going to drown them. I bring these fig cuttings out every single day, and believe it or not, I watered these two or three days ago, and they're already almost completely dry because they're out in the natural sunlight. If you're like me and you use clear plastic cups to root your fig cuttings so you can monitor the soil conditions, you can clearly see 
that this fig cutting is pretty dried out. There are no water droplets or any built up humidity inside this cutting. So it's clear right here that this fig cutting right here could use a drink. Same thing goes with this one. The potting mix is pretty dry. If you used opaque containers that you can't see through to root your fig cuttings, it's a little bit tougher. What I would recommend is flipping them over and checking the holes in the bottom of the containers and make sure that they're not very damp. If they're kind of dried out, that probably means that your soil has dried out completely and they probably need a drink. One thing I do not recommend is waiting for the leaves to wilt to water them. That may fly for a very well-established mature fig tree. They can handle being dried out before you water them, but for cuttings this small and this fragile, if you let them dry out and they start to wilt, the roots may die back and they may not be able to recover. So if I had to choose, I would rather my figs at this stage be slightly overwatered than risk them being completely dried out. When you buy your plant food, you're going to get a bag that looks like this with the granulated fertilizer inside and a scooper inside of that bag. It's hard to see, but inside this scooper, there is a small ring and there is a large ring. The outer large ring, which is the entire scooper, is one tablespoon. The inner ring is one teaspoon. And if you follow the instructions right here, it specifically tells you for indoor plants, you want to mix one teaspoon per gallon of water every two weeks or 14 days. For outdoor plants, you want to mix one tablespoon per gallon of water every 14 days. And the reason why is uh, you're concentrating the fertilizer inside of a little container, whereas outside it will be eaten up by the earth. So you need to use more fertilizer for outdoor plants than indoor plants. Because we are growing these in cups and we have very confined soil, we will be using the indoor instructions. So inside this mixing bowl, I have exactly half a gallon of water. And if you remember from the instructions, it specifically said for indoor plants, we want to mix one teaspoon of the fertilizer per one gallon of water. So to stay within that proper ratio, we need to use one half a teaspoon for the half gallon of water. Now, if you also remember from the instructions, it recommends feeding your plants every 14 days. That's not going to work in this case because the containers are so small, we're, we're going to have to water our plants more often. So what I want to do is I want to further have that amount because it is more than likely going to require me to water these fig cuttings twice as often. Now because these fig cuttings are so small and so young, we don't want to hit them with full strength fertilizer to begin with. So if we were to follow the instructions and give them fertilizer every single time we watered them, we risk burning up the roots. Because we are limited with such a small amount of potting medium, I want to give my fig cuttings fertilizer every single time I water them. But since I'm going to be watering them so much more often, than uh, the box recommends. I'm only going to use a fraction of the strength that the box recommends. So inside here, I only have about a quarter teaspoon, maybe even less of granulated fertilizer. And if you recall, to keep in line with the box instructions, I would need half a teaspoon. Well, to have the box instructions, I, would, I have a quarter teaspoon in here. And I'm eyeballing it, but this is roughly a half strength dose, maybe even less. So if you're not quite sure, you can err on the side of caution and be even stingier with the fertilizer. Because we're going to be watering them so much more consistently than once every two weeks, it's important that we give them a diluted fertilizer serving. Now that I've added the fertilizer to the mixing bowl, I'm going to mix it up as best as I can until all of the granulated crystals are gone and everything has been stirred and dissolved completely. So now that we've covered all of our bases and we've explained the why, when, and how of fertilizing our fig cuttings, let me actually demonstrate how to do this. And there's no exact science to this, there's no perfect way, but the tool that I really love using for this is a turkey baster. And this is literally a 99 cent grocery store turkey baster. When it's filled up completely, it has a volume of one ounce, which hopefully you can clearly see here. 
And the reason why I like using this tool is it allows me to accurately and precisely measure how much water I'm giving my fig cuttings. And while at this point they are pretty resistant to rot because the roots are so advanced, we still don't want to overwater them if it's possible. So I like to take my turkey baster in the fertilized solution that I made and give it three ounces of water, which will be three full quantities of this turkey baster. So I'm going to dip it in here. I'm going to fill it up to the one ounce mark and I'm going to go over each cup and I'm going to give them all three and I'm going to do them each one at a time that way it allows the water to trickle down inside all of the cups before I go back and give them each their second and third ounce respectively. And once watered, the fig cuttings are just going to sit out here on my concrete pad to drain. And so we're not wasteful, I will use the rest of the fertilizer on my very early tomato seedlings. And they'll be very happy about that. And that right there is the why, when, and how of fertilizing fig cuttings. I sure hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe for future updates and more videos like these. If you're curious about anything that I used in this video or in my garden in general, please look at my Amazon storefront linked in the video description. Everything that I use is linked in that storefront. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see each and every one of you on the next video.